Law Enforcement in the Wild West There are thousands of men who enforce the law in the Old West. Most of the duties they perform are collecting taxes, keeping an eye on the illegal sale of drugs, violence, routine patrols at night, and observing orderliness at saloons and gambling sites. However, in many cases, not all law enforcers did their duties. Often, they are the ones involved in crimes. That's not all. At the end of this video, you will discover why Johnny Bean was tagged as the most intriguing lawman in the Old West. Performing admirably in law enforcement, Virgil Earp, Bill Tillman, and Charlie Seringo met with extraordinary circumstances. These lawmen have a good score for reputation, but sadly the ordinary people in most cases, their relatives, are doing the opposite. For example, Virgil's brother, Wyatt Earp. He was once arrested for riding a stolen horse in 1872 and for running an illegal faro game in 1911. On the contrary, after a year after being elected, Henry Plummer, Marshal of Nevada City, revealed his bad side. After arresting a man who beats his wife, he comforts the aggrieved wife, mostly at night. To fully win the lady, he murdered her husband. He was given a long-term sentence. However, in 1859, he was released early for health reasons. In 1863, he convinced the locals in Montana Territory to elect him as Sheriff of Bannock. In a matter of weeks, the plumber of gang has operated strings of countless robberies and murders. The citizens of Bannock ran out of patience and hope. They went on a hanging spree in January of 1864. Citizen mobs threw 20 men, aka necktie parties, by late January and continued to arise up to 50 three years later. It is a surprise that one of the victims was Sheriff Plummer. The vigilantes hanged Plummer, with deputies Ned Ray and Buck Stinson from the Bannock Gallows on January 10, 1864. Thomas Kelly was a longtime clerk in the San Francisco City Police Department. Most of the time, he was hired to act as a special officer. But did you know that he is also a pickpocket and he also carries unauthorized weapons? He has a long arrest record that includes some arrests while he was being paid as an officer of the law. How could that happen? The story that goes around in San Francisco says that Kelly was protected by his Irishness. He is one of the lucky notorious. Some lawmen had tough times once in their lives, like Blankenship. He had a very good life as a lawman. He worked all the way up from constable to a deputy sheriff and city marshal of Phoenix in the 1880s with dignity. When his daughter died, he started doing illegal things like collecting illegal taxes. He confessed this publicly and apologized. He resigned soon after. Luckily for him, he was not prosecuted. He made a fresh start in the copper town of Jerome, Arizona Territory. He was hired as a mine watch. His hard work eventually paid off and he became a local sheriff. Within a few years, he became a city marshal of Jerome. Patrolman Wiley Lewis of Pasadena, California was rec recommended for the post by the chief of police. His responsibilities include watching over stores and houses at night. He had a hard time financially because he had a big family to feed. His salary for being a patrolman would not suffice most of the time. He had to do something against the law to make both ends meet. He borrows automobiles from his friends and made numerous robberies. He was able to put palatable food on their table. Not only that, he was able to buy expensive bicycles, tires, high-end brass beds, expensive paintings, and clothes. Who would not doubt this sudden change of lifestyle? One day, his home was searched, and among the pieces of evidence that were gathered were a mask and cap. He served a stint in San Quentin Lewis. He died at Nevada Silver Mill. The most intriguing Western lawman was Johnny Bean. Johnny Bean had a long-time career for 30 years. He had several roles like being a school inspector, tax collector, tax collector, federal border inspector, 
Arizona Territory Legislature and a Sheriff of two counties. He is also a superintendent of Yuma Territorial Prison. It is a lot that talks about his dignity. He was best known as the Cochise County Sheriff who took the side of the extra-legal cowboys, alleged rustlers about the OK Corral. He testified against his fellow lawmen, Virgil and Wyatt Earp. No one becomes a hero at the end of it. Controversy seems to follow him everywhere he goes and in whatever position he has. In other events, in other events, he was always in court to answer felony charges while he was still in the position as Sheriff of Cochise County. Those cases were dismissed, however. Those cases were dismissed. However, Dr. George Emery Goodfellow took Behan was collecting rent for properties he no longer owns. You have just watched interesting lawman's life during the Old West. Now click the next video to learn about the outlaw's fearless moves.